Good morning, friends. Namo. Tasso. Bhagavato. Arahato. Samma Samputasso. Worthy. Anaba. And perfectly self enlightened is the blessed Buddha. This is the fourth recording in the series Back to Basics, uh, where we will speak a little bit about uh, the triumph of truth and the opposite, the ruin of lying, of falsehood, of pretending, of deceiving. But first, uh, we'll brush up from the first two, first, the first precept, behavioral rule in Buddhism is not to kill, one should avoid uh, all killing. And uh, this one does uh, basically because one cannot kill another being without killing yourself in slow motion. In the sense that one's life length, future life length, both in this life and then in the life to come, they become shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. So one is ruining, shortening, diminishing one's own life by killing others. Same, same with the second precept, which says not to steal. Training rule to take, not to take what is not given. Why not? It's because it increases the probability of one's own loss in the future. One's chances of being rich, of being wealthy, of being well to do goes down. One lose much more, minimum thousand times what you gain by stealing. So therefore one should not steal. The fourth precept is about not lying. Musavada is a, is a saying. Musa means false, not correct. Vada means speak to say something. Someone speaks false, basically means lying. Vada can also mean to some extent to go with or to defend falsehood. It's like you take the false in the hand and then you walk along with the false. You are siding with the false. You are on the falsehood team. The bad team, the evil team, the team that ruins the world. This one chooses when lying, when deliberately telling something that is not true. This party one should not take. What is lying? Is any kind of falsehood, uh, pretending, deceiving, uh, conceiving, Double dealing, imposting, imitation, cheating, slandering, any kind of making it deliberately look like A, well knowing that it is like B. This is a decision one takes for this last reason, usually short, short sighted. One wants the, the others in the world to know it's, it's like A, but one very well knows that it is like B. So there's some, it's this intentional act of choosing deliberately to deceive, to mislead the world. It is there the bad karma is created. It's created like a probability wave, it's parked out in nature, it's parked in mind, and it cannot be erased. It can be modified, but cannot be erased. When first the lie has come out of your mouth, then it's very, very difficult to, to wind back. Huh? There's no rewind button on re reality. The table counts. Huh? You told a lie, you told a lie. Huh? You have to face the consequences. So be very careful what comes out of the speech. One can also deceive a lie with the body. One says, ah, oh, it's over there. Well-known, ah, it's over there. Huh? 
or similar things. Any obscuration of the facts is lying for this or that purpose. This deliberate obscuration or perversion of the facts of the truth is also a corruption of the mind and one's heart. Because one ascribes to something that deep down is evil. It's not harmless to the world or to other beings to tell a lie. Why not? Because they might believe it, actually. And then they go with something that's not correct, that's not, that's not true. This might cause them much unhappiness further down the road. If you tell a lie to another, then this another might, it might go and tell it to someone, many others in the world, as if it were true. And they might believe it. That this can cause great harm in the world. Because you, what you believe, you also act upon. If you say this man over there, he's evil, and, he, whether he's, a, and he's a good man, then all the world might react against this man. Or that this principle, or that this idea, or that this philosophy is evil, is bad, is untrue, is naive, or whatever. And it's not true. It's not exact. Then all the world are deceived. This is very harmful to the world. So therefore sticking to the truth is a gift to the world. It's a form of being harmless to the world, to all beings. We say one should stick to the truth like the moon sticks to its orbit around the earth. It's a fixed orbit. It doesn't leave this orbit. It keeps rotating around the earth in this orbit. And so also one should go around the truth, sticking to it forever, like a principle. It's very difficult today, because uh, we have this uh, concept of white lies. And this concept is foolish because there is no white lies. They're all gray, if they're not black, and usually very brown, and dirty and smelly. So there is no white lie. It's, it's, it's an obscuration. So if people say, ah, but you can tell a lie if it's for a good purpose. No, that's not the case. One should not, that, that's not the ideal case. The ideal case if one is asked for something and uh, one wants to con conceive something, be discreet about something for a good purpose, then one should not answer. Then one should be silent. Huh? That's a typical example from the commentary, Buddhist commentaries. It's a Buddhist stand right in front of a forest. And then a deer comes, young deer, and it passes him and goes into the forest. Then a deer hunter, he comes with his gun ready, and then he asks the Buddhist, did you see the deer? Then the Buddhist said, he doesn't say nothing. He said, yes, I saw the deer. Ah, did you see where it went into the forest? Yes, I saw where it went into the forest. Ah, did it went into the forest over there? The true Buddhist doesn't answer. If he asks, ah, did it wind into the forest over there? No answer. Did it go over there, 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 back, or jump into a lake or something? No answer. Why not? Because then the hunter might go and harm the deer by shooting it, and thereby also harming himself. So no answer is also an answer. It's a very good answer. It's much, much better than a white, gray, or brown lie. Don't lie for anything. Not to lie at all, to stick with the truth in a, to a completely, absolutely degree is the seventh mental perfection of which there is ten in Buddhism. We call them parami or paramitas. And Buddha, he told about his perfection of this truth uh, in his former lifetimes. They protect him to the third degree. Not all do that, but some of some Buddhas, they do. And he uh, was being uh, taken prisoner together with a lot of others uh, by a man-eater, a, a cannibal. And then uh, he persuaded the cannibal to let him go 
if he and then he will come back tomorrow. And uh, the man that then let him go, he went back to his parents and put his uh, kingdom, he was a young king, uh, in order and gave it, the kingdom to his son. Then he went back to the cannibal. And the cannibal was so surprised because he, he assumed, he took for granted that he will never come back, but he had, had 100 other uh, people he could eat. So he, he didn't care about it. So he was so surprised that he actually became a disciple of this young king. And then also he set free the hundred other people or many other people that he had in his prisons uh, for his cannibal eating. So even though the Buddha in his prior lifetime, he, he actually went back with the intention or with the, with the possibility of, of being killed and eaten by a cannibal. But nevertheless, he did so. Why so? Because he has said he would do so. As you say, you also do. You don't say A and then do B. Or the vice versa. Huh? Then there's pretending. This is also a form of lying. It's kind of, it's not, maybe not coming out the mouth as a verbal construction, but it's a setting up of circumstances, pretending it to be like this, while one is very, very well aware that it's not like this, it is like that, acting in some way, setting up circumstances or signs in reality that make others believe it is like this, while one is very well aware that it's like that. This is also a form of lying. Nonverbal lying. Then there's the last kind, which is the most subtle lying, is self-deception. A very deep vice, very difficult, tricky one in Buddhism. Because we all, as we are, un, as, as long as we're not enlightened, awakened, then we deceive ourselves to a smaller or larger degree. It's like telling yourself a lie and then you actually believe it. Then, of course, what one believes is the truth, one goes and tells others. It is like this and that. Why does one tell this incorrectness? It's because one has believed in one's own falsehood, one's own lie. One has deceived oneself. Very tricky, very tricky. Because there can be all kinds of circumstances. Uh, f favoritism, uh, prior conditioning, uh, past memories, uh, who you like, don't like, what you like and don't like, that has made one believe that it's like this, while it actually is like that. Very difficult, tricky to come round up is self-deception. It's always present. Buddha once said kind very fundamentally. However you imagine it to be, it is other than that. You cannot imagine reality on the absolute level. You can experience it, but imagine it, no. This gives some degrees to say all our imaginations or assumptions or uh, dogmas or uh, paradigms or conventions about reality, they are forms of self-deception, either big or small. They might be 10% uh, true or 50% true, but then also 50% not true, not correct, not exact. It is a little bit like so, but then also a little bit like that. So it's not an absolute truth. Buddha, he once admonished his own mind, speaking to his own mind, he said, Hey, mind, you have to give me an honest answer. Otherwise, you, you fool me. Be straight, be honest. Give me an honest, don't slide around. Don't mess around. Give me an honest answer, mind. Don't be a traitor to yourself. Don't cheat on yourself, mind. 
you have to be honest to me, otherwise I cannot trust you. If I cannot trust my own mind, who can I trust at all in this universe? So he kind of like pushed it on his own mind to be very straight and honest with them. Uh, I just have a little uh, demonstration here of also a very common phenomenon that's bending truth. Ha, that's, uh, this stick here I made, this has some principle because it's actually completely straight or at least very almost. Uh, so it's very simple and even. And this has some beauty to it, this very simple principle of being uh, linear and even. So there's this, this bending of truth, it's like that. Huh? It's bending, I, I can't bend it a little, it doesn't matter. Yes, you can. No, you cannot bend the truth a little, because this is not beautiful anymore. So also with bent truth, they are not beautiful anymore. Because they have been deliberately bent, distorted, perverted, obstructed, made otherwise than they really are. Huh? You can bend the truth a lot. Huh? Huh? You can even check here and then cut it. Huh? Huh? This is the truth. Huh? It's like that it was before. Uh, then you chop another one, part of the truth, huh? a third part of the truth, huh? a fourth part of the truth, huh? and then you have this one left. Huh? Ah, here's my reality. Who wants that? Huh? Compared to the other one. Nice, straight, long one. This is only a fragment. It's not worth a dime. It's actually worse than that because this is only a reduction of reality. It goes worse than that if we look at the future because it's ruining the future, both of society as a whole and of one's own individual future. The probability of people telling one's lie or deceiving one or frauding one in the future goes up while the probability of people being honest towards oneself and also respecting oneself, uh, placing confidence in oneself, goes down. This of deliberately misleading the world by lying is like peeing in the soup, we say. It's like urinating in the soup in the soup that everybody has to eat. Why so? There is a pollution of an idea of reality that the world has to, has to kind of like live with and eat. So the social soup is polluted by lying, deceiving. This is, has spurious effect, can cause conflicts, large conflicts, Disharmony on the, for example, if you lie about your colleagues, uh, then there will be disharmony in the working place. Uh, if you lie in your family, deceive your spouse for this or that reason, with this or that thing, or your own children, then there will be disharmony and disrespect in the family. Wherever you take this lying, falsehood aspect, then it ruins everything. Why so? Because one loses their trust in each other. It's only take one lie, then people lose trust. Because if he lied there, then he can also lie there. Buddha then epitomized this by saying, a person who lies, he can do anything. And it's very good to, to know, this means that he potentially could kill you. This also means that if you lie to somebody, then under the right circumstances, under pressure, you could be brought to kill this person also. So therefore, lying should not be seen as something insignificant. It's just the start of every crime, of every corruption of the world. There's this falsehood. All crimes, all falsehood, all deceptions, they converge on this crime of falsehood, of speaking false, whether it's individuals who does it, or organizations who does it, or governments, or politicians, or priests, or whoever who does it, then it's a crime, a crime against humanity, 
a crime against the world, a crime against nature, is not harmless, it's harming. It's also interesting to note people you see in the public domain, they, uh, and this one also should know one oneself, one is not known for, for the good things only. One is usually known for the bad things. If you see an actor or politician or a general or so, they lie or uh, they have extramarital sex or something like that, they do a mistake, then they are known by that mistake. F forever hereafter, if you mention their name, ah, then you remember, ah, he did this and that. This reputation, one loses only once. As soon as people know you're a liar, then you will be a liar forever. It's very difficult to repair. Unless one goes and admits, ah, I did a mistake, I told a lie, uh, I'm sorry, can you forgive me? Then they'll say, okay, he maybe have made himself better, or, or herself better, improved on this lying issue. Which is many cases is tempting to cover up something huh? for this arrest reason. Would also exemplify it with saying, ah, this man, the honest man, if the king or the court say, say, they call him in and ask him, did you see that? Then they say, yes. If he saw it, they say, yes, I saw it. What did you see? Then he tells exactly what he saw. Did you hear that? Yes, if he heard it. And if he didn't hear it, didn't see it, say, say, no, I didn't see anything. I didn't hear it. So he doesn't cover up or tells a story, either to protect himself or to protect, protect someone else or to gain some trivial uh, benefit like money or protection or whatever you can gain by lying or covering up the truth. He doesn't do that. He sticks to the truth. One can trust him. He's an honest man. From the man's point of view, he also gained confidence in himself. When he goes into the public domain, into a large hall with, let's say, uh, 50,000 people, and he has to enter uh, the speaking uh, pulpit and grab the microphone, then he's not shy. Why? He's open because he knows he's clean. He can speak out. He goes with, straight up with his... Well, you see the liar, huh? He's kind of like, uh, he's hiding in the bush, huh? Uh, he, he, don't, he don't like it. He don't like to be exposed. Because he has a lot hidden on his back. And if he's exposed, someone might see it. Someone might, might discover this whole cupboard uh, of bad lies, of deceptions, of fraud he has on his back. The other reward of uh, honesty is after a, a long time of reliability, one gains a certain dignity, worthiness. People think it's something uh, one not notices so much oneself, but uh, suddenly people, they place confidence in you. Also regarding whether regarding money matter, or their health, or their children, or important things. They, they know they can trust you, because they have for a long time experienced that you never lied. Even when there was a reason to. You stick with the truth, or you gave no answer. A Malaysian Buddhist, he recently made a very nice poem, he said, You can play with your drama, but you cannot run away from your karma. And that's very true. That's very true. When one is lying, then one is playing with a drama. Huh? Ah, maybe I, I can sneak through this lane. 
and hide up something I feel ashamed of for this right reason. But of course, as he also noticed, one may be run away from this mistake, but one cannot run away from the regrets one has in one's mind and in one's heart. The karmic accumulation which is everywhere in the form of a probability way, also one cannot run away from. So, it's a gift to the world to stick to the truth, this rule. This also is found in other religions, of course. It's a part of the Ten Commandments. Those shall speak the truth, those shall not lie. So it's a very good rule of thumb. You can find in all basic religions and in all systems of ethics and morality. Again, I know this talk about morality, this talk about ethics, is not popular. But it is important for one's own personal future and for the future of society at large. It is important for one's happiness, for one's welfare, and for the welfare of the human society at large. We cannot have harmony. We cannot have social happiness if we run around in a society and tell each other, deliberately tell each other stu stories that are not true, that we know is falsehood. We cannot, because everybody gets wacky wacky. What to trust, what not to trust. You never know. How can you know? It's very difficult to know. Very harmful. One place enormous risk and uncertainty and thereby suffering in the world by deceiving it. It's worth noticing from an objective point of view, if you, if you ask the psychologist how much does human beings lie today, they have measured that by placing video cameras in the homes of, of people and then uh, recording them on their daily life for a long time and then checking up all, on all things they said and then measuring the frequency of uh, lie tales, also by interviewing them and checking them what they said. And they found out by this objective measurement that uh, on average people today lie approximately five times a day. So it's really a common phenomenon. It's a widespread vice, widespread corruption of mind that it doesn't matter. It really matters. It's very expensive to lie comically speaking. So if one sees this uh, uh, recording and says, ah, it doesn't count for me, all this you say, because I don't lie, then there's a very big risk that he actually lies right there. He lies to himself, huh? or she lies to himself, because this is so common, so common. It happens every day, five times a day. Another one was, uh, they asked, uh, bosses, how many have experienced uh, that one of their employees had lied to them deliberately, usually about mistake, they didn't make a mistake, it was another one who made the mistake, within the last week, seven days, 80%, 8 out of 10 employers has experienced that one of their employees lied to them in the last week. So it's very common on the workplace also, not only in their private life, but also in the professional life telling lies, covering up mistakes, so on. It's catastrophic, socially speaking and individually speaking. Therefore one should, again as I say, stick to the truth as the moon stick to its orbit. The ego agrees. May many beings be happy thereby. Thank you for your attention.